Are you saying this was a natural disaster, pure and simple? A natural disaster. Well, a hurricane is. What hit the Mississippi Gulf Coast was a natural disaster, a hurricane, pure and simple. The flooding of New Orleans was a man-made catastrophe, a federal f**k-up of epic proportions and decades in the making. How's your house? Oh, don't ask me about my house. How's your house? We're up on Octavia. What about you? Still living on the boat. Y'all got a lot of water? Oh, not much. You know her from Homicide. You know her from her Academy Award nominated role in Frozen River. And now from Treme, the hit HBO series based in New Orleans. Melissa Leo, she plays the character of Tony Burnett, the crusading lawyer in the city. She's joining us from a set. She's working in Texas to mark the anniversary of Katrina and the flooding of the city. Melissa, welcome to Grit TV. Ever so glad to have you. Thank you so much for inviting me. So, Melissa, talk about your attraction to New Orleans. Was this a story that you'd been following during Katrina before? Did you have a relationship to this place before, Treme? I had heard that Katrina had occurred, and I had uh, known a couple of kids from my uh, home in Ulster County, New York, that had traveled down and helped with um, some rebuilding homes and so like that, but really um, was not very informed. And one of the great joys of my work is that then I ended up spending a month doing the pilot down there and getting to know the city somewhat, and then, you know, several months shooting the series and really getting to know New Orleans, not what the media was saying about it, but getting to know itself. And the response from the local people down in New Orleans, both as we were doing it and they were finding out about it as we were shooting it and as it's aired, the sense that they feel that they really, truly, finally, at long last, are being portrayed with some modicum of reality to it is a really moving thing to be a part of. Your character, Tony Burnett, is, um, she's just a pit bull on this justice question. She's trying to find what happened to a, a person in detention, uh, and it's not a happy story. She's married to a man who's hugely expressive, speaking out in every way he can, a professor, a writer, a colorful character played by John Goodman. But the two, by the end of season one, have come to different kinds of fates. Um, the lawyer making a little bit of progress, getting truth. The professor in total despair, and we won't give away the story. Um, did you get any insight into what this scenario, uh, what the difference between characters like that is? It's a very clever, dramatic tool to have within the same household these very different approaches to thing, things, uh, none less passionate than the other, uh, but just passionate from very different angles. And I think um, one of the great things about the characters also is that they have these very common human flaws, each of them in their own, because of that passion. And I think for Tony, she gets very myopic in the uh, idea that there is right and wrong, that there is a way that things must be taken care of. She can't understand when Candy Alexander's character um, doesn't want to investigate any further. For Tony, that's her life, is to, to find out who's done wrong and, and call them to task on it. And uh, she's waylaid from being able to do that by the family of, of the uh, deceased boy. And uh, she, it flummoxes her. She, she can't understand it to save her life. So I know that you carry now this the story of New Orleans and the people that you've met there and your character is modeled on real attorneys. Um, you carry that story with you. As we look at the fifth anniversary since the events that are at the heart of Treme, what are your thoughts about what's important for us to let go of, what's important for us to stick to, and, and how we move on? Gathering people together to make change, to make things better, is a very beautiful thing and necessary in the end. But the way that happens is by single individuals taking a stand and not veering from it. And in New Orleans, you find an extraordinary group of people 
who against all odds with trailers they went and bought themselves because FEMA wasn't going to provide them and parked them in their driveways with their totally decimated houses and said, I'm home. And those people are the people who have saved New Orleans. Individuals thinking of their own families, thinking of their own homes, and therefore building back a, a community. Um, to be down there shooting five years after and reminding that community of what had occurred not so long ago. One last question, Melissa. In the work, some of the work that I've mentioned, um, Frozen River, for example, as well as Treme, you, you play really tough women up against uh, tough odds, and the stories in some ways reflect the separation in society that people can be going through such an intense experience and most of us in the public have no idea, no relationship to that reality. Can television help us break through and, and, and can it help us not just personally experience or have a feeling about it, but do something with others to change things? I, I, I think that it can and that was what I was um, uh, uh, alluding to in saying what a powerful tool television is. We, uh, as, a, as a people, get things off of the cold fire um, that we don't even know we get. My teeth should be whiter. My house should look like that. My um, information just seeps into us, osmosis through the, the television screen. And I think that that notion of that although it is very much about New Orleans, it is very much about this particular incident of Katrina and the aftermath and the levees broke, um, it is in fact a universal story. There's troubles everywhere in the world, all across the United States, and there's all different ways that people handle troubles. And to see people handling it in better ways and less better ways, um, is it, it is teaching it is a teaching tool in a in a very subtle way and and to be um you know in amongst the shining gleaming houses and cars and all of that um and and be telling real stories about real people yes fictionalized and yes dramatized but um i think it does give people information and and maybe as i was saying that that one person who um thought maybe they should do something about it and didn't and switch on HBO one night to be entertained and are in fact reminded, oh man, I meant to do something about New Orleans. Maybe I'll make a phone call tomorrow. Melissa Leo, thank you so much for being part of our TV experiment here at Grit TV.